Good morning. This is Thursday, and we are on day 33 of our 50 days of transformation. Did you forget what the focus was? 50 days of transformation, 50 days of looking at God's word to examine our hearts, examine seven areas of our life. We've looked at our spiritual health, our physical health mental and emotional health. And now we've been looking at our relational health. This relational health is based upon the second great commandment, love one another. Relationships, that's what makes up the core of our lives. And people will say one of the most difficult and most stressful things in life is an unresolved conflict with somebody else. Nothing will drain you more. Nothing will affect you mentally and emotionally and even spiritually than having a difficult and painful relationship with somebody else, especially somebody that you're supposed to be close to. So how do you deal with that? You know, Jesus and the scriptures state plainly that the Holy Spirit leads us to life. God leads us to experience life, fullness, strength. Then the Bible will say at the same time, the flesh. What we naturally want to do and do in our old nature leads to death. Death is when you are drained of your energy to the point that you lose your consciousness. You lose the energy from the blood bringing oxygen to your body to the point that your body stops and you die. And so the things that we naturally do in the flesh drain us. That's the reason that people have stress. And for uh, not every reason of the flesh leads to stress, but a lot does. In fact, you can say that the scripture says, if your mind is fixed on God, you'll have perfect peace. The opposite of that is when you operate according to your normal default reactions of anger and bitterness and resentment, it's going to lead towards death. You are going to lose your energy. You're going to lose your joy. You're going to lose your mental health and your emotional health. And so when the Bible talks about relationships, it is talking about principles that actually bring life to you, strength, peace, emotional health, mental health, and ultimately spiritual health. Now let's pray and ask the Lord to be here with us as we look at his word and have our ears open to what his spirit has to say to us. Let's pray. Father, we want to enjoy the abundant life that Jesus promised us. Lord, you sent him with good news to give freedom to the captives, to give sight to the blind. And Lord, sometimes in our own flesh, we can become so blinded by our bitterness, our resentment, our anger, our unresolved conflicts with others. And Lord, we can certainly be captive to these feelings that we seem to not be able to let go of. Lord, I pray that this scripture today will go deep into our hearts. And Lord Jesus, as you would say, that we would have ears to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wonderful. All right. So, and I always like the number 33. That's the age of Jesus when he died on the cross. When I turned 33, I was very young and had a lot of strength. And it just hit me that that was the age of Christ when he died on the cross. Two threes. Three is God's number of the Trinity. It's a special number. So day 33 is special because of the number, but it's especially important because of the scripture verse. 
Today's scripture is, above all, love each other deeply because love covers over a multitude of sins. And you read in your devotion that this can be actually read in two different ways, the way the Greek language is. It could read like we usually think about it. Um, you know, when uh, I love others in a deep way, then that will cover over their sins. But it can also be read, when I love others in a deep way, God will cover over my sins. And that's based on the scripture. It's both are true. Whether it reads both ways or not, they're both true because Jesus says in the way that you measure it out to others, God says, I'm going to use that same measuring cup to measure it out to you. If you have a big gallon jug of grace and you're measuring grace out to others in a big bountiful way, God says, I'm going to measure out a big gallon of grace on all the ways that you fall. But if you're strict toward others, judgmental, and you have a little teacup of grace, that's all you're going to provide for the faults of others. And God's going to say, well, I've got a teacup for you, buddy, because you're going to judge them strictly. That's how we're going to roll with you in your life. And so it really benefits us to say, Lord, give me a gallon jug of grace. Give me a bathtub full of grace. Lord, give me an ever-flowing grace. And I think that goes back to the statement of Jesus that we have to abide in him if we're going to have the constant flow of his love and his grace through us toward other people. You know, one of the things I did when I saw this scripture is I wanted to see the context. So I went back to 1 Peter chapter 4. And in, in that chapter, uh, Peter is actually talking about the end of time. He says in verse 3 uh, that to the time already is past and sufficient for you have carried out the desire of the Gentiles. In other words, he starts out by saying, you know, the time is past for us to live like the rest of the world. The rest of the world gets angry. They slander one another. They hold grudges. He's saying that time is past for you. And he says that the world lives in uh, lust, sensuality, drunkenness, carousals, lust, abominable things. And you know how the world does today. And it says in all this, the world is surprised that you don't run with them. In fact, they malign you. And don't we feel this as Christians? If we believe in the sanctity of marriage, we believe in the sanctity of life. Every baby is a human being. The rest of the world maligns us, makes us feel like we're narrow-minded and bigots for simply believing in the ways of God. And so we're living in a difficult time. And verse 5, Peter reminds us that God is going to judge everybody. And it says in verse 6, the gospel has been preached for this reason that we who were dead in our sins, that we can live in the spirit. And so we're alive. The rest of the world is dead and condemned to an eternal separation from God. But we should be living differently. And that's the context. And in verse seven, that's where he says the end of all things is at hand. God is going to bring an end to sin an end to all the evil and wickedness. And God is reminding us the end is coming. But it says, therefore, because we know that all these things are going to end, it says, be of sound judgment and sober spirit for the purpose of prayer. And so one of the things God is saying is, you need to be in constant communication with me. I need to be empowering you in your life. You need to have time that you're spending with me to be strengthened because the end is coming and you are going to need my strength. And that's the next verse that we've looked at in our devotion today. It says, and above all, keep fervent in your love for one another because love covers a multitude 
of sins. Peter is very much aware, and the Holy Spirit is very much aware that you and I struggle with sin. There's not a Christian alive today that doesn't struggle with temptation, doesn't struggle with his own self of selfishness and self-centeredness, doesn't struggle with really loving and forgiving. And so the scripture is saying, in difficult times, above all, don't let it affect your love. Above all, love, it says, keep fervent. Make that a passion of yours to love others. You know, as I looked at that and some of the things that are mentioned here in our devotion, it says, be patient with somebody who's slower than you or not fast enough for you. It says, be kind to those that they really just need some more help in their attitude of life and all. It says, don't boast about yourself. Don't make this about you. And then be careful. Don't get angry. And then be protective. Love others when they're being maligned by someone else. It says, don't give up in, on others. The Bible says, love believes all things. You keep believing in one another's even when we fall. And love is all you need. But one of the things that it left out that 1 Corinthians 13 says, 1 Corinthians 13 says, love is not provoke, does not seek its own, and does not take into account a wrong suffered. Now that is kind of saying in the negative what today's scripture says in the positive. Today's scripture says, above all, love deeply because love covers a multitude of sins. And the negative, 1 Corinthians 13, 5, Instead of saying love covers a multitude of sins, it says love does not keep an account of wrong suffered. And so one of the things that you and I need to learn to practice, to have healthy relationships, don't keep an account of wrongs suffered. You know, when we are hurt by someone, we tend to want to hang on to that. We are really selfish in a lot of ways. But God is telling us there's a selfishness and you hanging on to your hurt when I have forgiven you of how you have brought hurt to me, says Almighty God. Love doesn't hold on to a hurt. When you put something in an account, it's like you write it down so you won't forget it. Love doesn't do that. Love doesn't have a ledger where you keep an account of things that others have done against you. Love deeply. And you know, one of the things I thought about that is we all need a bucket load of grace every day. And so our prayer is, Lord, give me a bucket load of grace for others. Loving deeply. Instead of thinking about how they've harmed me, thinking about how I have suffered, I let it go. And I choose to love. I choose to cover it over. That's what you do when you don't think about it. When it comes to your mind and you just cover it over, I'm not going to think about that. It's a choice. And remember that the scripture says the way we are transformed is by renewing our thinking. You see, it's in our thinking that we decide to think about something that somebody has done against us. We renew our thinking and we say, no, I'm not going to go in that room. That is the depreciation room. That's where I go in there to think about all the bad things about this people, person. And all I do is like them less. Instead, you close that door and say, I'm not going in there. You go into another room. It's called the appreciation room. And you just choose to love them. You choose to think about good things. How can you believe in them? Love covers a multitude of sins. Now, the thing that I always go back to, I need the Lord Jesus Christ living in me to accomplish that. Without me, you can do nothing. It's my personal relationship with the Lord. That's the reason an everyday devotion is so important 
because that gives you a moment to allow your spirit to soak in the truths of God, the reality of what it means to really live. Can you imagine to not have the stress of being irritated by others? Irritated. I just let it go. I love them. I'm not hanging on to that. That's going to free your mind to be able to think about those things that are blessings. Think about the grandkids. Think about the beauty of the air. You know, we, we, you go back to that whole focus of the mental health in it. One of the things there, it says, replace the negative with positive. That's what love does. It doesn't have an account of the negative, but it replaces those with positive thoughts. So what did I hear? Well, one thing I heard is that love covers bitterness. And I say, Lord, help me to cover over any bitterness or any inappropriate behavior from others. Help me to cover this over by just loving them. Lord, there's people that because of their attitudes or their selfishness or their pride or their self-centeredness or words they have said or behavior, things they're doing, Lord, those are bothering me. Well, one thing I will do is I will take that to the Lord in prayer and say, oh Lord, you have grace for me. Help me remember how much you love and forgive me that then Lord, you will give me the grace and the strength to do the same for one another. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, please help me not to take into account any wrongs that I'm suffering. But Lord, if I'm hurting because of what somebody else did to me, remind me of the pain of the nails going through your hand that I caused you. And that Lord, because of your love for me, I will love others. And isn't that what the Bible says? We love because he first loved us. The power of the Holy Spirit. So let's pray and ask the Lord to help us in this. Lord, you said that we would have to take up our cross if we were to follow you. We will have to have to really work at not living, not being irritable, not being bitter. Lord, we're going to have to die to ourselves if we're going to follow you because we need you to take up residence in us. And that's our prayer. And Lord, when any thought comes to mind of others, how they've hurt us, how they've wronged us, Lord, help us to put all of that into a room cover it over and just say to our heart, we are not going in that room. We're not going in that direction. But Lord, may we put a fresh new room in our heart and mind for these people and say, Lord, help me think of something good. Help me pray for them. Help me love them. Lord, help me find something to do good for them. Give me another attitude in my heart because Lord, this gives me life. This gives me freshness. This gives me joy. And Lord, whenever the devil in my own flesh brings back those bitter feelings and thoughts, help me to remind myself all that is in the stink room and I'm not going in there. Shut the door and help me always, Lord, with your help, to go into the fresh, beautiful, healthy room of love and patience, kindness, in a room that says, I will not keep an account of wrong suffering. I'm going to be free from these chains. I'm going to live in the joy of knowing that the grace of God is all I need to face each and every difficulty, even relational difficulties in my life. Lord, we love you. Thank you for visiting with us at this time. May your spirit, oh Lord, 
really, truly live in us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Relational help, not keeping an account of wrong suffered, but instead loving in the grace of God working through us, covering over a multitude of sins. What a beautiful thought for this day. Lord bless you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning. Bye-bye.